Close your eyes and try to imagine how you feel when you get scared. How your palms get sweaty. How your heart starts racing. Maybe I'm being a, a bit picky here, but notice the difference, Daniela. Your heart starts racing, your heart starts racing. The second one is the correct one because we're talking about the heart, it's singular, so the verb you need to add the S. So your heart starts racing, starts racing. Um, and when you say it here in the video, it's, I cannot listen to it. I listen to something like your heart starts racing. So keep in mind it is your heart starts racing, your heart starts racing. How do you breath? If this emotion is triggered by something that we're hearing, our brain starts to produce. Our brain starts to produce the image. Our brain starts to produce the image. Again, the second one is the correct one. Our brain starts to produce the image. Once again, you have the heart, the singular verb, and the s. So our brain starts to produce the image. Just the image of how the story might go. For some kind of twisted reason. Most of us want to know how the story ends, even when the feeling of discomfort grows as we pay attention. We all know a story that made you feel this way, with fear. Maybe right now you remember the story about the killer that never got caught, or the lonely street that stranger thing happens late at night. Maybe we all remember the same one, the whistler, the weeping woman, the boogeyman. These stories are called urban legends. But what are they? The Oxford Dictionary defines Oxford Dictionary define Oxford Dictionary defines the, the second one is the correct one again, right? So Oxford Dictionary defines Urban legend as a humorous or horror story with some kind of truth that goes around through the years and where the characters are known by the teller. Are known, are known, are known by the teller. Another definition that we have about urban legends is folklore, myth or legends that pass from generation to generation. The first time that we hear the term urban legends is in a book written. A book written by, a book written written by, a book written by, by a professor in Utah, USA called The Vanished Hitchhiker, American Urban Legends and Their Meanings. But even when most of us know a story like this, it's really rare to find someone who knows the different types of urban legends. So I'm going to talk about the two different types of urban legends. First, we have social urban legends those that happen in daily basis. They try to warn people about something. I'm going to mention the four principal characteristics of social urban legends. First, the Very good, yes. I like the way you use your hands to tell us that you're gonna talk about four characteristics of social urban legends. That's good. Um, so, good job here. Now, we have the other type of urban legends, horror urban legends. These try to get the emotion of fear from the listener. They work with paranormal or mythological scenarios. As well, we're going to work with four principal characteristics. The first characteristic is that all we have in lonely scenarios where the characters cannot find help easily. The second characteristic is that always happen to, a, to one person or in a small group. The third characteristic is that the cultural connotation is really strong in these cases. We all know the story about the weeping woman, but this story is not just known here in Venezuela. This story is not only known, it's also known in places like Mexico and Dominican Republic, but the story and how it's told changes by country. Changes from country to country. 
changes from country to country. The fourth characteristic is that something tragic always happens in this story, like a death or a stressful situation. Now that we know the different kinds or different types of urban legends, we can now talk about the similarities of this type of urban legends. As well, we're going to work with four principal characteristics. First, the first characteristic... Okay, do not use as well at the beginning of a sentence. Um, you should say something like, I am going to mention four characteristics too, or I'm going to mention four characteristics as well, um, right? Is that they share familiar scenarios, the lonely places. The second characteristic is that no one seems to remember who told the story the first time. The third characteristic is that they always tend to change when one person tells them and pass to another. Okay, this part is a little bit difficult, so you should say something like the story changes when it is passed from one person to the next. It's like the telephone game, when you start from an original phrase, and when you end the game, the phrase is really different from the original. The fourth characteristic, and the final, is they trigger a strong emotion, like fear or danger. But the most important part about talking, talking about urban legend is why we're still afraid of these kind of stories. We live in an acknowledged society. It's really easy to find the source of most of these stories. So why... There's some research that they found that why that people get scared about urban legends because they work with normal fears. The person that tells you the story is someone that you know, and the characters of this story is someone that they know. So it's really easy to get involved because you feel that that's something can happen to you. Maybe you don't know the person, but you know the place. So it's something that easily can happen to you. Okay, easily should go after the auxiliary. It can easily happen. The next time that you go there, that's why we're still scared. Because who knows when that can happen to you.